When we think of prison escapees, we imagine a group of inmates smuggling in blueprints of the prison, making and stealing tools to cut bars and pick locks, and shuffling through the tightest tunnels underground to make their way to freedom. Surprisingly, this is not far from the truth. Although not as flashy as seen on the big screens, these escapes are just as complex and nail-biting and shows the links that people will go to to gain their liberty. Luckily for the general public, prison escapees are usually caught within a few days. However, there have been a handful throughout recent history that have slipped away, never to be heard from again. Some could even be alive today. Join us this week as we count down 10 of the most dramatic prison escapes and the escapees who have never been found. Welcome to Lawless Central. Number 10. Sharon Kinney After the murders of her husband, the wife of her lover, and a man in Mexico after spurning his advances, triple murderer Sharon Kinney found herself in Iztapalapa prison serving a 13-year sentence. Two years into her sentence, Kinney was reported missing in the prison after missing both a morning and evening roll call. A blackout in the prison occurred, and after extensive searching, Kinney could not be found and was never seen or heard from again. The warrant for her arrest still stands 50 years later. It is one of the longest outstanding warrants in American history. She would be 84 years old if still alive today. Number 9. Jerry Bergevin Jerry Bergevin was not a man who liked to follow the rules, despite his best efforts. Even after serving in the army, working steady jobs, and having a family, he couldn't help but find himself in trouble. He began to burgle and safe crack in a bid to give his family a better life. But this would come at a cost. He was sentenced to serve 15 years for his crimes. However, in 1969, he was transferred to a low security prison called Camp Waterloo. Soon after his arrival, during a routine headcount, he was nowhere to be seen and had simply dropped off the face of the earth. He was never seen or heard from by his family, although there have been tip-offs of sightings in Detroit and New Orleans. His family home was also found to be burned to the ground and abandoned. He is believed to have died whilst living in California, according to his granddaughters. Number 8. Glenn Stark Chambers Convicted murderer Glenn Stark Chambers seemed to have a bit of a good luck streak in the lead-up to his escape. Originally on death row, he was commuted to life without parole at Florida's Polk Correctional Institution. To keep himself busy, he began making office furniture in a workshop with other inmates. On February 21, 1990, whilst loading crates into a truck, he slipped himself into a box of furniture. He had somehow enlisted the help of a fellow inmate to seal him inside the crate and be loaded onto the truck. He rode out of the high-security prison and, upon arrival at Daytona Beach, simply walked away free. Upon inspection, a prison uniform was found in the truck and a missing person was noticed at Polk Correctional Institution. Chambers was often described as intelligent and resourceful, so he may have flourished after his escape. His case remains open to this day, and if still alive, which could be very likely, he would be 70 years old. Number 7. Eleanor Jarman Eleanor Jarman, also known as the Blonde Tigress, was an American fugitive and robber who escaped from jail in 1940. Her infamy grew and grew as she garnered widespread media attention, and she reached infamy after the murder of a clothing store owner during one of her robberies. She was sentenced to almost 200 years in prison, but this wasn't going to deter her from the life and freedom she craved. In 1940, she wore a polka dot dress and scaled the prison wall, never to be seen again. Much like Homer's mother in The Simpsons, Jarman kept in contact with her family in a very unique way. 
She would send secret codes through classified ads, asking things like, let's meet for coffee. The messages abruptly stopped in the mid-90s, and her family never heard from her again, and the mystery of what happened to her remains unsolved to this day. Number 6. George Edward Wright George Edward Wright is one of the only fugitives to have escaped from prison twice and further evaded a third arrest. He was first sent to a New Jersey prison for the murder of a gas station attendant during an armed robbery and managed to escape on August the 22nd, 1970. He was captured and sent back to prison, only to escape once again in 1972. In a bid to disappear forever, Wright and a few accomplices hijacked a Delta airplane. He had disguised himself as a reverend, hiding a gun in a hollowed-out Bible. They demanded ransom, and after releasing the passengers in Boston, flew to Algiers, where they remained free. On September the 26, 2011, after more than 40 years of evading capture, the police caught up with Wright in Portugal. However, Due to there being no extradition treaty between Portugal and the United States, he was released and remains in Portugal to this day. He is the only hijacker to ever remain at large. Number 5. Theodore Cole and Ralph Rowe The second and more successful escape attempt from Alcatraz was carried out by Theodore Cole and Ralph Rowe, who unlike their predecessor Joseph Bowers, who was shot trying to escape in 1936, took their time in their planning. The bank robbing pair were taken to the maximum security prison after attempting to escape from another prison, but even Alcatraz couldn't hold them. On the 16th of December, 1937, the pair were found to be missing during a routine headcount. They had in fact cut a small hole out of a window in the prison's tire repair shop and shimmied out, fleeing into the fog. Although there is no evidence that they had created a makeshift raft, it is speculated that the pair relied on floats using tires or air canisters. After no immediate sightings of evidence that they made it to the bay, officials concluded that Cole and Rowe had most likely drowned in the unpredictable waters. Many reports of sightings have been made, and although the police followed up on every lead, there is no evidence that the pair are still alive. If they made it out, they would be long dead by now. Number 4. John Patrick Hannon John Patrick Hannon is the record holder for the longest escape from custody. Escaping from HMP Wandsworth in the UK back in 1955, he would be 90 years old if still alive today. His warrant is still active, although the police have given up looking for him. Serving a fairly light stint in prison of only 21 months for car theft and assault, Hannon simply could not be contained. Just 30 days into his sentence, he escaped by scaling the walls with knotted bedsheets along with another inmate, Gwyneth Thomas, on Thursday, December the 22nd, 1955. Thomas was caught just 16 hours after their escape after being spotted by a lorry driver. Hannon, however, managed to evade a major police manhunt. He broke the record for longest escape of 45 years and 11 months back in 2001. He has now remained at large for 67 years. It is thought that he made his way back to his native Ireland, and police have tried many times over the years to find him by putting out wanted posters and even addressing the man himself, asking, if you read this, Mr. Hannon, please write in. We'd love to hear from you. Number three, Joanne Chesimard. Joanne Chesimard, also known as Asada Shakur, was a member of the Black Liberation Army. She was convicted of the murder of a New Jersey state trooper during a gunfight in 1973 and was sentenced to prison for life. She escaped from prison in 1973 with the help of the Black Liberation Army, who took prison guards hostage and drove her away in a getaway car. A bounty of $1 million was put over her head, but this has never been collected. She was the first woman to be added to the FBI's most wanted terrorist list, and it is thought that she lived underground after her escape. 
She later fled to Cuba not long after and was granted political asylum. It is speculated that she still lives there to this day. Glenn Stewart Godwin Glenn Stewart Godwin goes down in history as the only prisoner to have escaped from prison twice, the second time being successful as he was never to be seen again. He lived a seemingly normal and quiet life until 1980, where he robbed a drug dealer, killing him in the process. Godwin was sentenced 26 to life in Folsom State Prison in California. This is where his first escape would take place. In 1987, he cut the bars in the prison yard and climbed down the drain pipe. Godwin's freedom was short-lived. He was arrested that same year in Mexico for selling and distributing drugs. He was sent to prison in Guadalajara, where it is speculated that he murdered his cellmate during this time, although this couldn't be proved. In 1991, he escaped from prison a second time for good. In 1996, his name was added to the top 10 most wanted fugitives by the FBI and issued a reward of $20,000 for any information of his whereabouts. It is speculated that he resides somewhere in South America. John Anglin, Clarence Anglin, and Frank Morris. Alcatraz was one of the most notorious prisons in the world when it was operational. Closing its doors in 1963, the prison, also known as The Rock, was seemingly inescapable. It sits a mile from San Francisco Bay, surrounded by beating waves and shark-infested waters. But this hasn't stopped many escape attempts over the years. The most famous and successful escape was performed by brothers John and Clarice Anglin and a man named Frank Morris. The trio had spent over six months concocting a plan of escape that would take place on June the 12th, 1962. Using realistic-looking dummies placed in their beds to trick the guards, they climbed through holes that they had drilled into the walls of their cells and made their way in a corridor. They had stashed away a makeshift raft that they had constructed using over 400 raincoats, inflating it using a musical instrument. It is certain that the prisoners had escaped, but whether or not they actually made it alive to the bay is a different story. Parts of the raft would be washed up on the shoreline. However, it is thought that much like Theodore Cole and Ralph Rowe, they succumb to the violent waters. Many believe the trio to have made it out alive, with the sister of the Anglin brothers stating, I've always believed they made it, and I haven't changed my mind about that. There have been lots of sightings of the Anglin brothers and Frank Morris over the years, but none have ever been confirmed. If you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, with new videos out every Sunday. This has been Lawless Central.